Hello, John here from rchelicopterfund.com. Uh, this is kind of a part two video to the little video series I'm doing here on RC servo PWM rates and frequencies, uh, basically to help augment my RC servo page where I kind of talk about it, but this will help demonstrate it and show it to you. Um, in the first video, we talked about the 50 hertz PWM signal that is standard out of all normal receivers, RC receivers. Uh, we talked about the um, that it refreshes, that the signal refreshes every 20 milliseconds. Uh, that's the uh, refresh rate, which works out to a 50 hertz um, PWM signal. And we showed how the PWM, the width of the PWM pulse, uh, the width of it, pulse width modulation, how changing the width between 1,000 microseconds and 2,000 microseconds dictated where the servo would rotate to with roughly 1,500 uh, microseconds being your centering position. What we've got now is we've got a receiver hooked up to a standard fly barless unit. Most fly barless units when you're setting them up you've got options to choose digital or analog. Um, if you choose analog uh, servo um, that will give you the 50 hertz rate coming out of the fly barless unit. If you pick digital um, generally, you will also have more choices in frequency, anywhere from 165 hertz up to 333 hertz. Uh, I think that's the highest. Maybe there's a few going higher now. This specific one, this is a Taro uh, ZYX that probably a lot of people are familiar with. Um, I've got the analog outputs on this uh, flybar unit set to 250 hertz, and we're going to confirm that on the scope and on the rudder channel I've got it actually set to 333 Hertz. The reason for that is your servo is just getting more information, um, more commands every second. Instead of 50 times a second, you know, it's getting it's getting command position uh, or positioning commands, you know, 333 times a second, which is needed for, you know, to hold the tail super crisp. Uh, also why super fast digital servos are required if you're running that kind of um, that frequency. If we hook an old just a standard analog servo up to that high frequency it won't be happy. It buzzes and it doesn't even work. Well it works but it's not happy about it. This will burn out very shortly. That's why you need digital ser specific servos when you're running those high frequency rates and even some digital servos can't run at that high frequency that's why it's very important that you check the servo specifications to make sure it can run at those higher refresh rates and there's nothing wrong with running a lower refresh rate when you're in doubt always best to go lower um, anyways that's just a little tip unless you fly really aggressively generally most people do not need to run at super high refresh rates but if you're a really competitive flyer and you're really pushing your helicopter then yeah you want that tail refreshing that tail position refreshing you know 300 times a second whatever so again what we've done is we've hooked our um, probe our scope our oscilloscope probe up to our uh, signal wire and the ground of the scope probe up to our negative or ground reference wire uh, we're going to plug this into the rudder channel again. That's the first one we'll check. And all of a sudden you can see all those lines. In the first video I did, if you haven't watched, maybe you would want to, or will want to, uh, just because I explained kind of what we're seeing here on the oscilloscope, uh, what all these little lines reference. Again, an oscilloscope ref uh, measures voltage changes over time. And I'm just going to zoom into the scope, so bear with me while I do that. Okay, so... Uh, we're zoomed into the scope, and as we're set at that same scale, uh, 5 milliseconds per division, so each one of these divisions on the scope is a 5 millisecond window. And if you recall from the first one, uh, when we did the 50 hertz, you know, we, were, we only saw three of these little lines across the entire width of the scope, and one was happening every 20 milliseconds. They're a lot closer now because we've, we're cramming in a lot more uh, 
many more refresh rates to that pulse width modulation signal. The pulse width itself works exactly the same way. Again, you're probably not going to be able to see that on here, but as I move the rudder channel back and or rudder stick back and forth, those little lines are getting longer and shorter. But we'll zoom into one um, to actually show how it's identical to the 50 hertz position. Um, but let's zoom in on the scale so we can get a better idea. Okay, so now we're up to two. Let's go up to one millisecond per division and uh, see how we're doing. Again, as I mentioned in the first video uh, on just the standard signal coming out of receiver, your PWM signal is generally going to be around 3.2 volts and we're on one volt per division. So if we count up, that's our zero reference voltage on the center line of the grid. So one volt, two volts, three, and then it's on the second tick. So again, it's about 3.2 volts. So that's our PWM voltage. Now, as far as the refresh, let's just make sure we've positioned the start of the PWM pulse right on the left um, grid mark there, and we'll count. So we're at one millisecond per division, so one, two, three, and it restarts. Um, so if we calculate what that is, every three milliseconds it refreshes. So we'll find out what the frequency is. Again, I have programmed the fly barless unit in this case for the rudder channel to 333 hertz. You can just see as, as I'm yawing the gyro, you can see how the rudder signal is changing to the servo. Oh, and here's something interesting. I don't know if this is picking it up. See how that's creeping? It's slowly creeping. This was actually a problem with this fly barless unit. After it's turned on for about five minutes or so and it warms up, the rudder gyro creeps. So the, the helicopter would start yawing very slowly after it was flying for about five minutes. So if you've got a helicopter on a fly barless system that's for some reason, you know, after five, ten minutes of flying, or well, most helicopters aren't going to be flying for five or ten minutes, but you know, after a couple of minutes, after things warm up, everything's working fine, and then a minute or two, three minutes into the flight, you start noticing the tail yawing or even the cyclic if you're getting a roll or a slow pitch drift. Um, if you have an oscilloscope and you hook it up to your um, your gyro or your fly bar this unit, and you notice one of those channels drifting you know it's an issue with the actual unit. And that's why I don't use this one anymore. It's no good. But anyways, let's calculate the frequency because that's what we're doing here. So we've got a pulse restarting every three milliseconds. So again, if we want to figure out the frequency of that. Uh, uh, one divided by the frequency equals one divided by your count, so or your refresh rate, so it's every three milliseconds. Enter, so it's 0.333 repeating, 1,000 milliseconds in a second, so we have to multiply that by 1,000 to get our actual hertz value, and it's 333.3 repeating hertz, so that's exactly what we'd want to, what we'd expect. And uh, I'm just going to zoom in on one of these uh, positions again. We're at, actually no, let's go back to one. And just like the 50 hertz example, we're at one millisecond per division, or that's the same as 1,000 microseconds. Um, and so what we'd expect, we'd, we'd expect to see uh, it move anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000. Remember, this is drifted all the way over. So there it would be at 1,000. Center, should, it, should, it should center there. Actually, if I power this down and restart it, we might get it to work. Let's just try that here. So, restart it. Okay, our drift is gone, but it'll probably come back. But anyways, again, uh, 1500 to be in the center. Full travel, 2000 one direction. Full travel the other direction at 1000. Uh, microseconds. And now we will check the uh, one of the cyclic channels which I have at 250 Hertz. 
programmed. But you can see those they're spaced out a little bit more. That's 333, and there's 250. And let's just confirm that. We'll reposition. Turn the scale back up to one millisecond per division. Uh, line up our beginning of our PWM pulse at the edge. So one, two, three, four, and it starts over again. One, two, three, four starts over again. So it's refreshing every four milliseconds. Again, frequency is one divided by the value, so one divided by four milliseconds, 0.25 times 1,000. Again, 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So we get our frequency rate. That's uh, 250, exactly what we'd expect it to be. And again, the, uh, the signal works the same way. The pulse width shortens and lengthens anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000, 1,500 being your center position. So that's all that the higher frequency uh, fly wireless unit will do. Uh, so again, just very, very important that you don't hook a low frequent, uh, just a standard analog servo that's meant for 50 hertz up to a fly wireless unit when you've got it programmed for a digital servo uh, with the higher refresh or frame rate of the PWM signal. And that's why it's important. So hopefully that helps clarify that a little bit.